Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is weak dominance. I cover it in Lesson 1.4 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. Now, in this entire chapter, we've only been looking at simultaneous move games, and your goal whenever you get a simultaneous move game is always going to be to find all of that game's Nash equilibria. Now, we started this unit by talking about iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, and I told you that you should always just eliminate a strictly dominated strategy whenever you see it, and the reason for that is that a strictly dominated strategy can't be a part of a Nash equilibrium. Remember, a set of strategies in a Nash equilibrium must be unable to be improved upon. So that means that if I were to play a strictly dominated strategy in a Nash equilibrium, well, that's impossible. I must not be able to improve on my payoff by playing this strategy in a Nash equilibrium. But if I'm playing a strictly dominated strategy, then by definition, the strictly dominant strategy must pay more than the strictly dominated strategy. And so that means I can profitably deviate from the dominated strategy to the dominant strategy. And so that's why a strictly dominated strategy can't be a part of a Nash equilibrium, which is why we're safe eliminating it as soon as we see it. But I want to look at something a little bit weaker in this video, and in fact, the name of this thing is Weak Dominance. So to illustrate Weak Dominance, let's look at this game right here. Player one, simple, two moves up and down. Player two, also simple, two moves left and right. Now compare player two's left option with her right option. Imagine she knows player one's going to go up, then left is better than right because one is greater than zero. Now imagine player one's going to go down. You can see that it doesn't really matter what she picks here, she's stuck getting two. So if you combine these two pieces of information together, that means left is always at least as good as right and sometimes better. So in this case, it's better. And in this case, it's equally as good. And so we refer to this as weak dominance, where left weakly dominates right. If left were to strictly dominate right, it would require this indifference here to go away. It would require that left always be better than right. And here, it's not always better. It's just equally as good. In this case, up here, it's actually always better, but here it's just equally as good. And so this equally as good part means that this is not a strictly dominant strategy. Left does not strictly dominate right. It only weakly dominates it. So to put that into words here, left weakly dominates right for player two, and that's because left is as least as good as right and sometimes better. Okay. So imagine we could just take weak dominance and treat it just like strict dominance and work our way through a sequence of iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies. Well, you can do that. And what you'll get after that is going to be a Nash equilibrium of the original game. So if we were to do that here, if we just eliminated right because right is weakly dominated, then we're left with left. And from here, it's just a decision of player ones to make sure he's getting the most out of his choice. Three is greater than two. So that means he's going to want to go up. And so that leaves you with up left as being a Nash equilibrium. So after using iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies, any remaining Nash equilibrium must be a Nash equilibrium of the original game. So if we're looking at the original game here, we now know that this is a Nash equilibrium. But there's a huge but coming. There may be more Nash equilibria, and you won't know until you go back to the original game and check. So as soon as you eliminate a weakly dominated strategy for the game, from the game, you might also be eliminating Nash equilibria from the game. And you don't really know. Sometimes you won't be, but sometimes you will be. The only way to know for sure is to go back and check. And in fact, by eliminating the right strategy of player twos, you are actually eliminating Nash equilibria. So to see that, I'm going to show you that this is in fact a Nash equilibrium. And all you have to do to check on that is to see if the players can actually deviate profitably, and the answer is that they can't. So to illustrate that, player two can't switch to left and get a better payoff, right? She's perfectly happy playing right if player one's playing down because two is equal to two. And player one doesn't want to switch from down to up because he's currently getting two for the Nash equilibrium. If he switches, he's going to get zero. That's not a profitable deviation. And so that means that this is a Nash equilibrium. So I know that a lot of people, when they first think of weak dominance, they think, well, that's really silly. No one would ever want to play a, we a weakly dominated strategy. Why can't we eliminate it? And part of the answer is, in formal terms, is that it eliminates Nash equilibria. But then they counter, well, you know, that doesn't make any sense still. I don't want to play these weakly dominated strategies because I'll always get something better or at least as good by playing the strictly dominant strategy. But I'd like to point out here 
that in this game, the two different pure strategy Nash equilibria actually have distributional consequences for player two. Player two actually prefers the equilibrium outcome where she plays the strictly dominated strategy in the Nash equilibrium. She prefers this Nash equilibrium where she's getting a two to this Nash equilibrium where she's getting one. So she actually has incentive to credibly commit to playing right and forcing player one to play down and go along with this Nash equilibrium. And it's actually in her best interest to credibly commit to playing this weekly dominated, gotta be careful when I say that, weekly dominated strategy. And so there is in fact reason why you might want to play a weekly dominated strategy, which is why we can't just throw those things away really quick and easily as we can with a strictly dominated strategy. All right, that wraps up this video. In the next video, we will deal with games that have infinitely many Nash equilibria. Join me then.